And hello everybody, got a little more fountain pen action for you here today. I'm using a Twisby, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it, Twisby Eco. And uh, I like this one, it's a demonstrator pen, which basically means it's clear so you can see all the juicy stuff going on inside of it. Uh, it's a demonstrator pen, I'm using just some sort of Noodler regular ink in it. And I'm drawing on a handmade sketchbook that I made myself, bound it together with Crescent Render Paper. Now, this probably isn't the ideal kind of paper that most people would use for writing with fountain pens and stuff like that, mostly because it's a little bit too absorbent and the ink does feather out a little bit, but I choose it personally because it's almost totally, completely in all other ways, bleed proof, which appeals to me immensely for uh, sketchbook reasons, you know, because I can draw all over all sides of every page, pour almost unlimited amounts of ink into it. You can even use, you know, spray paint and stuff on this, watercolors, ink washes, any, everything, and nothing bleeds through, which is crazy. Crescent Render makes their own sketchbooks, but I don't like how they don't lay flat. So I just bought, I bought their like loose leaf pages you can buy and bound it into my own sketchbook. And then I can go crazy on it, on it, with it, whatever, with all sorts of pens. But lately I have been getting more into these fountain pens. I didn't for a long time get into fountain pens because whenever, I mean, people said fountain pens and people recommended them to me for a long time. I thought of like really old fashioned, annoying pens that would like leak and drip everywhere. I thought of dip pens really. Dip pens are a lot of fun and you can like get used to them really. You just gotta, I think the secret there is making sure you just get the right amount of ink loaded on there and just being careful. But anyways, I finally started messing around with these fountain pens not too long ago. And it's really satisfying the way they put the ink down on the paper and you can scribble around it. I don't know, every pen I use, I like in different right ways for different reasons. Even, you know, even big pens, which don't, maybe don't put the ink down as liberally and satisfyingly on the paper are still really fun to draw with because you can do uh, more subtle, you know, grada gradations, gradations of, you know, shading and hatching and stuff like that. But these are really cool. Um, I am, in this video, for the first week of this video, doing a little giveaway with the people over at MassDrop. If you want to get your hands on a fountain pen, like a really nice one, I'm going to do a giveaway for a Lamy 2000. I actually don't have one of these really nice Lamys. I only have a Lamy Safari fountain pen, uh, but MassDrop is an enthusiast community that sells uh, enthusiast products. You can join different little communities. I think I'm a part of the audiophile, which is headphones and blades, knives, everyday carry, photography, tech, writing. There's a bunch of other ones, uh, but I'm working with the writing community here. And we're gonna give away like a nice fountain pen if you want one. So click on the link in the description if you wanna enter that giveaway. I mean, I, I'm not even trying to see if I can figure out how to enter the giveaway because that's a really nice pen. I don't even have one that nice yet. The thing I really like about these modern fountain pens is how they usually have like an ink reservoir, which is often refillable. Sometimes you can buy cartridges, you know, and just like they come with a little box of cartridges, different colors, etc. But the ones I like typically have refillable reservoirs. Uh, some of them, they're like um, plunger. I think they're called plunger mechanisms, something like that. Some of them you just push in and out. Uh, but like this one, the Twisby Eco, has some sort of like little twisting. I don't know, it's like strangely complicated. Like I'm not, it's probably not that complicated. It's probably less complicated than I think it is. But anyways, you twist, you twist it sideways and the plunger goes in and out for like filling up and emptying the ink. And I really like that as opposed to dipping. For some reason, the only dip pens I've ever really enjoyed using were the glass ones. Although there are other dip pens that people really enjoy and really get into like, just like the regular like metal nibs like I've seen these like videos and gifs and stuff on the internet, people doing this crazy calligraphy and stuff with those dip, those dip pens. Have you seen those ones that are like at an angle? It's like a straight handle and then like the nib is like at an angle. Is it called a, I think it's called oblique. Those are crazy. Like I wanna try that, but I feel like that's mainly for writing and maybe not for drawing, but maybe I should try drawing with one anyways. And a lot of people say, Peter, you should try calligraphy but for some reason, I'm not that into calligraphy and it doesn't, it just doesn't appeal to me that much. Just the idea of having to like practice the same exact lines over and over again, it stresses me out a little bit. It doesn't stress me out, it bores me. It, it's intriguing, but it bores me. 
sometimes when I'm drawing, I find myself drawing the same little lines in a drawing that I drew in a past drawing, and it's and that bothers me because I'm like, I want to draw a different picture, but here I am drawing the same lines again. Can I not think of original lines? I've drawn so many drawings that I'm stuck in some sort of weird rut drawing the same little lines that are curving the same way over and over again. But at least I can switch up the type of pens I use. I can get some sort of variety somehow. Anyways, at the end of this, I also tried putting a little bit of black light ink in the uh, same little cartridge in the back of the pen uh, where I had my regular ink originally, but on the downside, it turned out that the the paper I was drawing on was also um, actually fairly UV reactant. So the paper was already really bright, so you couldn't see the UV reactant ink that well. There wasn't enough contrast to really see what was going on, so it was very subtle. I could see it in real life, but it doesn't show up on camera very good, unfortunately. It is cool to know that when I'm flipping through my sketchbook, you know, in under regular light, it is cool to know that there's like secret, secret lines under there, you know, secret things that might show up if you shine the right kind of light on there. It's a good thing to remember before you start out one of these, you know, if you do get the black light ink and stuff that maybe shine a light on your paper first and see, make sure it doesn't light up too bright. There's just some papers that uh, are more or less reactants. Usually before I do a black light drawing, I just go down my bookshelf full of art supplies and sketchbooks of paper before I choose a piece of paper and shine my black light flashlight on them all and try to find one that doesn't light up too much so that I know when I do put the black light ink on it, it'll really pop. Anyways, had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, make sure you enter that giveaway if you're here watching the video in the first week and uh, it'll automatically uh, choose someone after the after it's over. And uh, thanks. See y'all later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.